Good morning guys, I'm Frequented World and uh, you caught me, I'm just checking the tire pressure on my PHEV. And the reason I'm doing that is I wanted to talk today about green driving. Now a lot of us that drive these cars, we are already aware of the savings and the green way to drive, but there are a few that aren't. And I know this because I get comments in my YouTube and Facebook posts and things like that. And so I just thought it would be a really quick, fun video to list some very simple things uh, and show you the percentages that you can save. Uh, most of my research comes from the EPA and the stats they use, but uh, there are all kinds of sources online and there are lots of little tips and tricks that you may not have thought of for saving fuel, even though we're already driving electric cars or if you're interested in driving an electric car. Um, and these tips will work on regular cars as well, guys. It's surprising the amount that you can save by doing a few simple things. After you've made sure your tires are properly inflated, the next best thing you can do is accelerate slowly when taking off. This can save you up to 20% fuel efficiency by having a nice light foot. Built into the PHEV, there are two things that can help you do that. Down here on the bottom, we have the EV button. Once you engage that, you know you're in electric mode only. The car is only going to use electric. Most of the time, it's smart enough to do that on its own. The second button that we're going to use is the eco mode. What this does is it slows down the acceleration um, that's available when you take off. So it actually is helping you have a light foot. It's limiting the amount of power that's there when you take off. So once we're moving, the best thing to do in the PHEV is to put the car into B0 immediately. Uh, B0 is a braking mode, which is we're not going to regen any ener energy in the car. We're just going to coast as far as we can. And this car, after multiple tests, I've done other videos that show you guys, um, you can regen up to five levels of braking. And for the first month and a half, I drove around in B5 thinking, oh, I'm regening all this power. You're not, you're actually slowing yourself down as soon as you take your foot off the gas and it's so sensitive that you just lift, you know, a millimeter off and the car starts slowing down. In B5, your brake light also comes on as well. So when you're going down the highway and you just lift your foot off the accelerator to go down a hill, everybody behind you thinks you're braking. So you don't want to do that. You put it in B0 and I'll tell you guys my experience to go across town is a 17 kilometer trip from where I am and I'm doing between 60 and 70 kilometers an hour across town. Once I put started putting the car into B0 mode, I immediately on half of that trip, so 17 kilometers there, I would gain five to six kilometers per trip. On the way back, I would gain another five to six kilometers, coasting in between all of the stoplights. So that leads me to the next tip, which is anticipated braking. So if you see that 300 yards down the road, the light has changed, don't keep accelerating. With the car in B0 mode, you're just gonna take your foot off and coast up to that light. What happens there is you're saving fuel by not using any, but you're also overcoming inertia. That's when the car has started to slow down, it takes a lot more power to get the car back up to speed. So from a full stop, you're using a lot more fuel than you are if you just coast up to that light if you get to that light 50 meters before uh, it turns green before you get there, you haven't had to stop, you haven't had to overcome the inertia from a standing still, and away you go again. A lot of fuel can be saved by anticipating braking. Wait! For every extra 100 pounds you carry in your vehicle, you lose 2% efficiency. So you can do some things like go through the car, make sure you're not carrying any extra gear that doesn't need to be, hockey bags, um, you know, even your tow hitch weighs a couple of pounds. If you don't need that, leave it at home. Um, fuel. I drive with half a tank of fuel. Why carry an extra 20 some liters of fuel if you're not going to use it, especially in the electric car? So I run at half and when I get down to an eighth of a tank, I'll throw in another 20 bucks. Also, if you can, take a big poop before you go for a drive. Don't feed your kids before you go for a ride. And for the love of God, don't let 400 pound Aunt Faye get in the front seat. EPA also states that the maximum efficiency can be achieved at 60 miles per hour or 96 kilometers per hour. So if you're gonna do any more than those speeds, you're going to lose for every 
five miles per hour after that, or eight kilometers, uh, six percent fuel efficiency. So wherever you can, try to stay under 100 kilometers an hour or around 100 kilometers an hour for maximum efficiency. In electric mode, I find that maximum efficiency is reached somewhere around the 60 kilometer per hour mark. Um, that's where I'm gonna get the most out of my EV battery. I'll probably get somewhere around 55 kilometers. Olaf Strummer hit up my YouTube page and was asking me how on earth I could get 7.3 liters per 100 kilometers. And he was telling me that his average is between 11 and 13 liters per 100 kilometers. And at first I couldn't figure out how this was happening because he said that he averaged 400 kilometers, 100 kilometers an hour. But then in a later post, he tells me that on the highway he does 120 to 140 kilometers an hour. So if we do the calculation, which I just mentioned to you guys, that every eight kilometers an hour over 96, you're losing 6% efficiency. That means Olaf is losing best case scenario, 18% fuel efficiency, worst case at 140, 43% fuel difference from what I'm driving. If you take my seven liters and add 43%, you're at 10.5 liters. So Olaf, there's your answer. The rest I'm gonna chalk up to probably a heavy foot and acceleration when you take off. That brings you right up to your between 11 and 12 liters per 100 kilometers. So you just need to go a little lighter on the foot and a little slower on the highway. So another good tip is to use your GPS system. You don't want to waste time and energy driving around to find something when the GPS can take you right there. It's built into the car, guys. Everybody has uh, Apple Auto or the Android version, and uh, that's a great way to save fuel by not driving around looking for your destination. So another great tip that I use is when we're in an electric vehicle, as we've stated, the slower we go, the further we go, I change my route. The town I live in is a perfect example. I can get into town by driving 18 kilometers on the highway, and everybody's doing 120 to 130 out on the highway, or I could take the back road, which is 60 to 80. I save a lot of fuel, and really it only takes me an extra five minutes to get to work every day. Okay, now for some specific techniques that I've picked up from the PHEV. I had a hybrid back in 2008, guys, so I'm a hyper miler from way back. Um, one of the techniques is obviously using the coasting that we talked about with B0, but in this car what I do is the same thing. I just touch the gas, speed up a little bit. Um, so if I want to be doing 80, I actually speed up to about 85, and then I let the car slow down, I coast as far as I can, and then I just touch the gas again for a few seconds, and then slow down and repeat. That's hypermiling, and that works very well in B0. Another thing to do is to use the charge button. A lot of guys say don't ever use the charge button. However, what you can do is use the charge button when you're on a long straight stretch on the highway, even if you only put five kilometers in or seven kilometers in, then use the save button. So that I know when I come to these little towns, I've got some energy saved up. And what happens is the car goes back into hybrid mode as soon as you push the save button. So. You can save up a little bit of fuel, and when you know you're gonna to come to that stop and go situation, you're gonna be on pure electric. Again, that's for the reasons of inertia. When we're stopping at all these little stop signs and lights in these towns, that's when we're using the most fuel. So, if you can, save five to 10 kilometers and use it as needed. Here in Canada, electricity rates are pretty low. So, at peak times, we're paying 13.5 cents per kilowatt hour. That's a thousand kilowatts. So to charge my car at a low time is about 60 cents and at a high time it costs about a dollar thirty. So my advice is charge your car any time of the day because it's still cheaper than using fuel. Now that's applicable here in Canada. You have to check your rates and do your math where you are but I'm betting it's probably cheaper to charge your car and for every three charges there's a hundred kilometers guys. So to figure out your math for that, you would have to charge your car three times because you're getting, let's say on average, 33 kilometers. I know that's a little bit low per charge, but uh, if you do that and charge your car three times, multiply the amount it costs you, you'll figure out your cost per 100 kilometers. So the EPA, to sum it up, says that you're going to gain 33% fuel efficiency by simply adjusting your acceleration, anticipating braking, and not speeding. 
33%, guys, and we can do even better because we've got electric in our PHEVs. I can also tell you guys that using the air conditioning costs you about three kilometers per charge, and using the heat costs you somewhere up around 10 kilometers per charge. Depending on how far you go, that number may come back down once the car gets to temperature. Um, if it's extreme cold, then you're looking at those numbers. Another one that people often forget or don't think about is air filters, guys. If you notice on the front of your PHEV, you've got a big air intake, which is gonna lead to an air filter. If you keep that filter clean, you can save up to five horsepower. If that thing is plugged, you can lose quite a bit of power. And what happens when you start losing power is you start pushing down harder on the gas pedal to try to get things moving again, and there you're burning more fuel. So if you can, clean those, keep those filters clean, and your car will be much more responsive. And lastly, this one I'm bad at, don't let the traffic behind you push you. I get some guy right on my RSN, three feet off my bumper, and I have a tendency to speed up. But uh, in the PHEV, I've taken to slowing down. Maybe I'll even put the stick on B5 and lift my foot off the accelerator and let them know what's what. So you don't have to take my advice, guys. Just think of your grandfather. If you drive like your grandfather, you're saving fuel, you're more efficient, and uh, a much better driver. Well, maybe. <laughs> so if you guys implement all those tips I just gave you, the only way you're gonna be more efficient is to get on a freaking bike, okay? I've taught you everything there is to know about efficiency and driving your PHEV. I know there are 10 of you out there right now who think the takeaway from this video was poop before you drive. But really, it wasn't. All right, guys, so until next week, stay safe, drive safe, and we'll catch you in the next video.